What a beautiful day for us in Tokyo, but not so much in Kyoto because just on the 25th of October, residents of Kyoto voted to ban photographs in certain streets and neighborhoods in the city of Kyoto in the Gion area. We're not quite sure exactly where, but this news has hit the wire and it's kind of a big, big news. And in this video, I'm going to explain why and my own personal experience and why this might not be a bad thing this might be a good thing and why it is a good thing for them and a bad thing for you. So uh, we'll start from the top here. Uh, I, I also, you might want stick, to stick around a little bit because I also talk with Kevin Riley, who is a resident in Osaka, and I'm gonna be playing back what his thoughts were on why this ban is taking place. Um, it's gonna be pretty interesting. And I'm gonna also be showing you that Kyoto actually has a guide on how tourists should act in Kyoto. And I'm gonna show that to you and, and you can actually see this in the description. There's a link in the description of this video so you can uh, download it yourself and learn some of the rules that you need to have if you go to Kyoto. Um, this is a quiet neighborhood in Tokyo. It's a residential neighborhood. Um, people, they have rules here. And if you break the rules, new rules pop up to enforce them. There's a lot of little alleys here. There are some tourists, mostly from France, but not a lot of people come to this area of Tokyo, which is called Skuda or Tsukishima. I really like it. Here's a, a, sh a quick alley. Let's walk to the end of the alley and I'm gonna show you some of this information. It's really cool to go through here, but people live here and you have to be very polite and respectful of the neighborhoods at night, not talk too loudly. You don't want to disturb your neighbors, right? You don't want to, you don't want to take pictures without permission, things like this. It's just not a good thing to do. Has been suffering the locals, the residents for a long time on the increased boom in tourists there. So much so that I don't know if they actually know how to deal with it all. It's a lot that's happened over a very short period of time. Kyoto's, when I first went to Kyoto 20 years ago, there were still a lot of tourists, but they were restricted to like King Kakuji, Gin Kakuji, Kyu Mizudera, the tourist areas. But recently, because of people like me, it might even be partially my fault, we've introduced you to the alleyways of neighborhoods. And a lot of people take advantage of that and they go there and they literally stalk Maiko and Geisha. I took a video here, check this out. I was there, I was in uh, Kyoto uh, last year to film this. Let me see if I could push play. There are a lot of people outside of an area, they're stalking a geisha. So the poor lady comes out the poor lady comes out and then um, she gets swamped for doing her job by tourists who want to get a picture with her. That's not such a bad thing, you know, for us as tourists, but it's a pretty tough thing for Maiko and the neighborhood, which just simply do not want any of the um, uh, traffic there. So Kyoto came up with a rule book right here. Check this out. It's called Aki, Akimahen. Akimahen. And uh, in here, you can see, you can download this and print this out. It's kind of neat. So we'll start here from the top. If you If you don't have any If you don't have any video, try refreshing your screen. Don't smoke outdoors. This is a problem with a lot of tourists that are doing it. You will be fined a thousand yen. This is for Japanese too. This is not just for foreign tourists. Be polite when asking Michael for pictures. Don't just start taking their pictures. There are laws in Japan where you can't take someone's picture without permission. You should always ask when you ask, when you take a picture, you cannot publish them without somebody's permission. It's against the law. Taxi doors open and close on their own. You don't have to force them open. They're automatically doing it. This is interesting. Don't litter. There's a fine of 30,000 yen. People were littering a lot in Kyoto where things were all over on the street. Street food in a problem. And actually, 
there's an area um, in Kanazawa, Higashi Chaya, they've actually banned street food. You're not allowed to eat on the street because tourists have come in there and they've completely just thrown the trash around, mostly bus tours from, um, I don't want to say other Asian countries, but I'm going to say other Asian countries. They can't find trash cans, so they just throw it on the street and the local resident says, we cannot have this. So Kanazawa banned street food in that area. And when I went there to go film a street food episode, I was shocked because people did not follow the rules. The result was that they banned it for everybody. And if one person ban breaks a rule in Japan, they'll have a meeting about it and then they'll end up banning it for everybody. I'm not gonna say any which countries they're from. You could probably find videos online. Probably. Can you get a permit to film? Yes, but you can also get you can also get permission by asking somebody, can I take a photo of you? Let's go back to this really quickly because it's interesting. Uh, take your shoes off before stepping on tatami. I guess tourists have done that before. Don't bring your own drink and foods to restaurants. Tourists have done that. Don't cancel restaurants at the last minute. We in Japan have the ability to, to um, make reservations and no one in Japan does it atakyan or cancel at the last minute. They don't do that, but foreigners do that. And if you break the rules and everyone loses, so just don't dot can, dot cancel on the dot. Please line up in an orderly way. Um, these are real rules. Don't, don't bicycle under the influence. One million yen in five years in prison. Um, keep toilets clean. There's a, a guide on how to use Japanese toilets. Makes, make room for others. Um, get out of the way on, on trains especially. Let people get off and on. Don't leave your bicycle on the road. Just like little things that have been bothering locals for a long time. Don't take pictures near train tracks because you can get hit by the trains. People are taking selfies. Don't take pictures where prohibited sometimes in shrines and temples. There's, if the sign says don't take pictures, don't take pictures. Remove hats and sunglasses in shrines and temples. I always do that. Try to be quiet and respectful in shrines and temples. Yeah, a lot of people are not. There's just too many people. The, the, the rules are in there. The rules are in the link in this, the video description. Just go and check it out because it, it is pretty, it's pretty funny. But it's funny to me because like, why do people need to be told this, right? They don't, I, 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 I don't understand that so much. But the thing is, um, a few years ago, no, I'd say like more, six years ago, somebody flew a drone. Japan didn't have many drone rules, but somebody flew a drone onto the roof of the prime minister. Uh, Prime Minister's residence roof and it landed on his roof. The police found it and that freaked out a lot of people and very quickly laws, draconian laws, came about where um, you could not fly drones in the city of Tokyo at all for no reason whatsoever, right? With awful laws and I had a drone and I'm like, ah, oh, this is awful. But I can understand where it comes from because everyone loses when one person breaks the rules. So if you have a freedom and one person breaks it, whether you think this is right or not, this is Japan's way. Japan is, it's Japan's country. They will make laws like this. Now we have a, a ban of photographs on the street in, in certain neighborhoods because tourists, this happened on October 25th, October 25th, just a, about three days ago, because tourists were climbing fences we're going into private property to take pictures. We're extremely loud after hours and the, and um, taking pictures of Michael swamping them to the point where they're so uncomfortable they can't do their job. The result is that they ban photos and they, they fine it. Now we don't know how, we don't know. I saw French people doing that. <laughs> well, I've seen American people doing that too, my countrymen. I'm just telling you right now that Japan is reactive to what one bad person will do, see the weak points in it, and try to find solutions. And the solutions are not always good. They'll just do something bad and everyone loses. That's, they, they don't want any risk. They, they're also worried about the safety of the Maiko and the Geisha. It's just too much. And um, I can understand it. So I, I, called, I called my friend Kevin Riley. Uh, a lot of you know him because he's, he's been on a lot of uh, street food episodes. And whenever I go to Kyoto or Osaka, I call my friend Kevin. Kevin's awesome. And I asked him his thoughts on it and I filmed it. So um, let's take a look at this. I'll put it right here. And there's some audio so you can hear what the king of Osaka has to say. There he is, his smiling face right there. Let's get him here. Audio. 
Here we go. This is Kevin Riley from Kuma's Kitchen. Hi, everybody. How you doing? You're on Instagram as uh, uh, Osaka Riley, right? Yeah, Osaka Riley. I mean, I am Osaka Riley. <laughs> you are. You're the king of Osaka. And my go-to guy, our go-to guy for Osaka and Kansai region, which is why we're calling. Um, yeah, you got questions, right? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Kyoto photo, photo ban. And uh, I think, you know, you can kind of understand why they would do that, right? What's your take on it? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a buildup for tourists. The problem is that I think a lot of tourists don't respect people's privacy and stuff, you know? Like, a lot of people don't want their pictures just taken. Yeah. Um, and especially they're going around and chasing the Michael and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I can understand both sides. I mean, I understand as a tourist, it's cool to get a photo of a Michael, right? I mean, come yeah. on, yeah. But on the other hand, you got to also remember that, you know, they do have private lives and, and uh, mm-hmm. they're trying to get, they're, they're working, they're going after their job or their training or whatever they're doing at the time. And, and you're getting in their way and it's getting a little bit crowded to some of those areas like Ponto Cho and stuff like that so yeah I can understand why they're bringing in the band but it seems to fit Kyoto's Kyoto's way Kyoto has their own way right I mean they're very yeah. private people in Kyoto yeah. especially those areas and this is only limited to a few alleys it's just because when I guess my take on this is when one person breaks the rules uh, everyone suffers yeah, and that happens a lot. You know, we see that happen here a lot is where suddenly a new rule will come in because, you know, remember we had those people that got food poisoning from yeah. eating um, yeah. raw meat? It was, I don't know how many years ago now. And right after that, we weren't allowed to have Yuki anymore, which is just like, oh, come on, you know, it happened to two people, right? I mean, yeah. it's like millions of people. But that's, that's, that's Japan. Right. It's like, you know, better safe than sorry. Let's bring in the rule. Let's change things. I, you know, they love the bureaucracy, so, hey. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's too bad. I mean, we get a couple couple bad apples, ruin the whole batch type thing. So. Yeah. I think just the culture has changed too fast for what Kyoto is. And Kyoto is a quiet, peaceful place. And now it's become kind of a loud place. And this is a reaction to that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when I came here 20 years ago, uh, I remember going up to Kyoto. I didn't go up there at first right away. And then my sister came here and she said, you got to go to Kyoto, right? And I was like, okay, you better get up there. And uh, I went up there and it was it was, it was really peaceful in those days. Like Sun and Zaka and places like where you and I went and had that matcha ice cream that right. time. Right? You know, that used to be just really quiet along there and just kind of wander along and enjoy. So it, it has changed a lot. I mean, you know. Uh, and Osaka too, like a Nippon Bashi and places like that where we eat you know, along the Dotonbori. It's so full. When you and I shot that food episode that time, yeah. quieter. Right now, we'd have a hard time to be people in front of our camera all the time. So. I know it was just a few years ago. I think it's just too many people chasing down the Maiko, chasing down people for photo opp- opportunities and being yeah. really loud about it. And just different cultures. You can't blame them. That's their culture. But yeah. here, they have to find ways to, and, and rules to taper that down a little bit. And they will actually find people. I'm pretty sure it's killed them. They'll do it. I think what they need to do is, is, is maybe even you know, getting all the, the places where people stay out know, just to educate people as to you know, rules and manners. Um, I've had this quite a few times because you know, I do the tours and I've had people going through garbage into, you know, where you're supposed to put your, your pet bottles or something like that, right? And I'm like, whoa, 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 oh, you know, and, and tell them, no, no, that's where people put bottles. Yeah, that's not yeah. a garbage can. But nobody's told them these things. And that's the problem too I think it's just to, if you could educate more of the tourists who come here they'd know what things to do and what not to do right you know, it becomes some kind of guideline that goes out here when you come in at the airport you gotta read this right <laughs> I don't know for, foreigners not, not everybody there's a small percentage they just don't they don't want to do do what they're told because they don't agree with it personally and I think finding them is maybe the only way. Drones is a perfect example. There have been people told, please uh, yeah. don't fly I, drones. So I talked about this a little bit. I talked about this already. So get, get, Kevin is exactly right. Like, people need to be educated and they need to be told on manners. Kyoto released this, like, last year. Again, you can download this and take a look at it. It's kind of fun. I printed it out. I'm going to be putting it on my refrigerator. This would be a great magnet of what not to do. Like, slap it on the back of your refrigerator. But look... How long do you educate tourists? Because they've been doing this for years. This is not a new thing. It just came to the point where the only thing that tourists will understand is when you fine them. And if you come out with a police officer and say, here's your fine, pay $100. You're not allowed to take pictures here. That's the sign. 
if you can't understand that, this is the only way to get the message out. And I can understand completely Kyoto wanting to do this, and I don't fault them at all. I think that it's probably the best way for people to take notice now. Now the international media is all over this. CNN jumped on this two hours ago. NHK reported this like earlier this morning. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm one of the guys probably who, who helped to cause this problem by introducing you to some of the quiet alleys of Kyoto's neighborhoods. I'm so sorry, Kyoto, Kyotonians. I did not realize that this would happen, but it's, it is, I, I never said to do the stuff that people are doing. And once again, this is not you. This is not like normal people. There's like one or two, 1% 1 crazy people in the world. It's just, you see them like commenting here in the live stream sometimes and the moderators have to ban them or block them. They exist. And when those crazy people do something bad in Japan, in the United States, we will just penalize them and, and let the society be free. In Japan, they just crack down on everybody. And that means that's another reason why Japanese society, people police people. So people will tell you not to do something or they will make sure that their own neighborhoods are safe. The reason why is because they know if you don't, everybody loses. When a kid or a teenager goes and he buys um, tobacco from a vending machine, and for decades, anybody can go and buy tobacco from a vending machine without ID. But then more and more kids started to buy it and were reported, and then they changed it where now you need an ID card. They were reactive to it, and now everybody who had that freedom suffers and you lose it. So all the little things that make Japan free, we want to protect that and we police ourselves. And when they don't, and when we don't, we lose it. And right now we've lost the ability to take pictures in certain alleys, which is not a bad deal. It's not the whole, not the whole Kyoto. Let me make this very, very clear. Not the whole Kyoto is banned for photos. It's just a certain, um, certain places here. Um, Dan writes in here in Kyoto, I was in cab two years ago. And the driver told, told uh, to take my baseball cap out of respect. I've never worn it again ever since entering that town. I've got checked. I, I, I take my hat off at the temples and the shrines. And uh, I, I, leave, I wear my hat because my hair is a disaster. It's just too hard to manage. It, it, and I like my hat. I also get sunburned and it just keeps the fort down. And it's, but, you know, I don't have the same kind of culture and manners, I guess, as some people, but I'm respectful to it. And you don't go to a temple or shrine or a church and you wear your hat, take it off, be respectful. Stacy loves my hat too. There's that too. Yeah. But you always want to be respectful of the culture. If somebody asks you to do, to take off your hat and you're a visitor, you do it. You don't argue with them. You say, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's what a normal person does. But if you come to Japan or especially Kyoto and you try to be a tourist with your own manners, I'll tell you something. Kyoto does not need the tourist money anymore. Kyoto does not need to attract tourists. Kyoto is fine without attracting more tourists. And if you told tourists not to go to Kyoto, more tourists would go to Kyoto. All right. So this is just the way Kyoto's got the history. People go there for that. And, they're, and they've been very polite to tourists, allowing them to, you know, be so disruptive. This is my opinion now to be so disruptive of their own neighborhoods. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just a little bit entertained by, by the, the banning and how much news this is gonna make. And they're gonna receive a lot of kickback from people who don't understand the rules. I understand that. And they're gonna say, we're Kyoto. We do it a different way than everyone else. We have our way. And I totally respect that because that's Kyoto's way. And, um, yeah, what do you guys have to say about this? Click the like button if uh, you think that this is bad. <laughs> because I don't want to say click the like button if you think this is good. Click the like button anyways if you like these live streams. How about that? Tourist cities have their own version of suffering. You know, Prague, there's a really good YouTuber named Honest Guide. That's the name of his channel. And he talks about um, in the Czech Republic tourism in Prague. Prague has been completely overrun by tourists. I went to Prague for the first time 20 years ago. No, more than 20 years ago, 1996. And there weren't that many tourists. There was a, a beautiful John Lennon wall that, that was cracking and paint. Tourists have come and they've taken away, they've chipped away all of the paint off of that painting. They break the rules. They make it harder 
for the locals to live, but they also bring in tourist money, which is really good. The problem is though that you don't need that much money and if it starts disturbing the natural flow of society, locals don't want to live there anymore. And Kyoto is very much like that. Locals don't, they, they, a lot of people are starting to hate their own town and they want to take it back and they want to change it. And um, I, I think Kevin and I both can understand that. Kevin's channel is called Kuma's Kitchen. His Instagram, which he just started, is Osaka Riley, R-I-L-E-Y. And uh, he's a very good friend, a friend of the channel, and he has a lot of supporters here. So definitely, I, I want to see him get as much love. He's always cooking good food for us, too. Kevin Riley. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, I'm here now to take some questions because I think that this is a really important topic for everybody. Again, the link is in the description for both Kevin's channels and the rules of Kyoto. If you're going to Kyoto, you're going to want to watch these rules because um, that when everyone asks me, how do you be respectful to Japanese culture? You can read the rules. That's why they wrote it. And be entertained by it, but understand them. All right, I, 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 had, I was friends with the director of a very, very big marketing company. Hey, Green Pumpkin. Hello from Czech Republic. Kanai and I are going to be in, in um, um, Prague on December 5th, 6th, and 7th. So maybe we'll do a meetup in Prague and uh, respect the laws and rules and be really polite about it. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you this. I, I, I have a friend who's a very, very um, high-ranking executive at a PR at a advertising company, one of Japan's biggest advertising companies. We were having dinner one night, and he told me, "Look, um, one of the great thing, one of the things with advertising, and why young people who think they can be really good at advertising fail, is because before you break the rules, you have to learn the rules. Before you break rules, you must learn the rules. Learn the rules before you break the rules. And before you start breaking Japan's cultural rules, learn them. So then, when you do break them, you understand them." And then if you understand them, maybe you can find a way to rectify that and then be back in people's good grace. I know that because I had to learn the rules. So I can sometimes break them, like know when to eat on a train, know when to walk and eat. You know, you can kind of do that if there's a street food area. If there's chairs all around there, then you, you should sit and eat. If there aren't chairs around there, it's sort of okay to walk, but just be very careful about it and make sure you carry your own garbage out. Like these are things that you have to respect um, and know these rules. And then when you do, you can understand when, you, when to break them. And those are the best things. Again, the link is in the description. I totally think that you should, uh, you should check them out. <clears throat> I'm still recovering from a cold that I caught from my wife who probably caught it from going to the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> so it's my fault. Uh, uh, Nosh, do you have anything to add in here? Sure, in areas that are permitted. You can take photos in any areas that are permitted to take photos. But the thing is, don't just don't take Michael and Geisha's pictures without permission. If you ask them nine times out of ten, they might stop and let you take a picture with them. And it's going to be a better picture. But if you're afraid of getting rejected and that's the reason why you don't ask, you're breaking the law. Because Japan has very, very, it's not like the rest of the other countries. Japan has very, very strict privacy laws. Meaning, if you take somebody's photo or you focus in on them and video them, not just like, if they're just in the background, that's one thing. But if you focus in on them and you publish something, you can be sued in Japan. So, public domain might be an American thing where you could just take pictures of people on the street. That's not really the law here. I don't know the law 100%. But I will tell you that I've, I've been told many, many times, pigeons are okay. You can take, pigeon, take pictures of pigeons, that's okay. But don't pick, take pictures of people and focus on them. It's just, I remember there was a tourist, he was from, he was from Poland, very nice guy. And he had a, a very long zoom lens on a tripod and was taking pictures of people in Ginza, their fashion. And he wanted to publish it in a magazine. And I told him, you know, you're breaking the law. Without their permission, you cannot publish any people's images here in Japan. He didn't, but like Kevin said, he just did not know the law. He just didn't know the law. So when I told him that, he really apologized and he went back to the hotel and I guess he called his publisher and said that we have to get permission from each person or you have to have a release form to let them go. Um, in Japan, usually a verbal permission is enough. But 
signing anything with a contract that requires a lawyer is just suspicious to people. So if you get a verbal permission, usually nine, 99, 99,000 out of 100, like, it's going to be okay. Like, these pigeons, you can take pictures of them. Just, just don't feed them. There are signs here. You might want to feed them. They, the pigeon might look hungry, but there's laws against that. Don't feed the birds, right? Don't feed the birds. They even wrote it in English because probably, yeah, 99,000 times out of 100 OCD stig. Oh, man, I got to write a book about some of the things that come out of this mouth when I start doing live streams. I saw the other day somebody um, riding a, a uh, kayak in here, and they now have signs that say no kayaking. It's pretty clear to understand that means no, but people will still do it because they don't understand. Or they just don't know. But once you tell them, usually people are pretty smart. 99,000 99, out of 100 people will be pretty smart and, and understand the rules. I, I can't believe I just said that. You can eat the pigeons. There's no sign saying you can't. Don't do that. Don't do that. But I feel for Kyoto. I feel for the people there, and I can understand why they would do that. Look at the little, little shrine between the apartment buildings here. Hey, Zato71, thank you so much. It's really pretty. This is one of my favorite areas of the city of Tokyo. Don't come here <laughs> because I don't want to ruin it. This place is called um, Tsukuda. It's not far from, the closest station is Tsukishima. And uh, if you do come here, please remember that this is a neighborhood. It's very quiet. Uh, be respectful and we'll still have We'll still have those alleys like you saw in the playback. You're gonna have to see it if you're just tuning in. You'll see these kinds of things. If you'd like to, I'm, I, there's something I wanna show you, all right? That's pretty neat with this neighborhood. And I'm gonna do another tour of this neighborhood, I think, in another live stream. But if we can get to 300 likes, I will show you anyway. I'll just do it, I'll just show you again in another live stream. What do you think? What do you think, guys? Up to you. I'll show you a little bit of this neighborhood if you, if you give me some love. Happy Diwali, everybody in India. That was quick. Thanks, everybody. All right. So down the street, and again, like, I'm just going to be really respectful. I came here and filmed an episode for uh, NHK's uh, Tokyo Eye about 10 years ago. And about the Nagaya and the apartments here. And I found that they still have public water pumps. Do you see that right there? And this is the old culture of Japan that still exists. And you're not gonna see this for much longer. See this water pump here? Anybody can come and pump the water. And before they had plumbing on this island of Tsukuda, which goes back like hundreds, like centuries, um, people would come to water pumps all over Japan. And this is where you would meet your neighbors and talk about stuff. Everybody had to go get water and they still work. at that see you could still get it and you could still drink it it's still pretty good so the, these go back hundreds of years and uh, yeah I know I know a lot of little teeny historical stuff in the cities this is pretty this is pretty cool huh see I told you look if you guys click like I, I will show you stuff you'll find these really neat alleys this stuff is not gonna be here for much longer too which is a shame these old wooden buildings. So I'm gonna come back here on another day that's it's so beautiful like today and bring you another live stream. Another live stream. Um, I wanna right now go into the chats. This is really important. I wanna get your feedback. Also in the comments below, leave your thoughts. Is this bad? Do you disagree with Kyoto? Do you agree? Do you see their point? What's your take? Let me know. Kyoto will be reading them. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that what we talk about here, Kyoto will read them. Konnichiwa. <laughs> He's like, look at there's a YouTuber. Kyoto will probably be reading these, okay? Hey David, thank you. Oh David, I'm gonna totally get some get some hot soup. There's like a there's a little cafe up there. I might get some get some uh, chicken soup or something. By the way, by the way, I have here for Brit, 
Brit in Hawaii, this is your postcard. Thank you for signing up to the postcard club and it's going right now in this mailbox right here, Brit. So, uh, probably the 425, it'll be picked up and it'll be on its way to Hawaii. Thanks for the support, Brit. <coughs> Woo! Let's see here. These videos are the only way I will get to see Japan. Rose has its... <laughs> well, I'll keep bringing you to different corners of the country. I have, I'm going down to see Kevin in November, I believe. I'll be able to see him, so we'll get a chance to see with the king of Osaka himself. I agree with Carlos writes in here. I agree with Kyoto. Too many made it bad, so they had to make rules. So Carlos agrees with Kyoto. and um, Amber Lily writes in here, Kyoto, their town, their rules, no negotiations. Nona, Nona B writes in here, I was, I was some awful be, behavior by tourists in Kyoto. I think uh, it is an overreaction, but I get where they are coming from. So, yeah, maybe Japan tends to overreact or go too far on the rules, and then they can make it lighter. It means they can always get rid of the rule or make the fine smaller, but they're going to start off really, really strict. That's just the way it is. No photos, but can they film? Travis, no. No cameras. It's not no photos, it's like no cameras. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Nobody wants, nobody wants that pictures here. Nosh Abroad, there are a lot there for the Rugby World Cup already. Yeah, that's another thing. It could be a reaction of, of people that are on the Rugby World Cup. Something happened to trigger this though. It, it was a buildup for a long time and there must have been one incident that was just over the top. They said, we gotta do something about it. Panda Club, Panda Cub writes in, they aren't overreacting. Um, you want Japan to have litter everywhere, loud people, no respect for the rules or culture. So yeah, you have to have rules and culture and you have to make some big splash that will make the news so people will understand. Why don't Japan's have, Japan has more bins on the street? The reason why is because people, this is a cultural thing, we take our own trash home and separate it. And you can, you can, go to the convenience store and throw your trash away there or the train stations you can throw your trash away there the reason they don't have it on the on the streets there's two reasons i can three reasons culture the second reason is crows there's too many birds that will go in there and make a big mess out of it and there's nobody to police the, the bins to make sure they do it nobody no one's going to put a lid on there um it stinks there's another reason you don't want trash to smell um and also, it's a, it's a security hazard, a bomb situation. If somebody, um, th this all happened after the, the gas attack, I believe, on the Hibia line in 1995. After that attack happened, they just took out trash cans and they felt that actually, when there's no trash cans, the city is cleaner. Get that one, huh? Try to wrap your head around that. The city of Tokyo is cleaner with no trash cans. All right? just. Think about that for a second. It might not make sense to you, but it's it's true. Nona B, thank you for the amazing cut. Thank you, Nona, that's really nice. David Brett writes in here. I'm a new subscriber, just sending this because I love your channel and you're a super nice guy. Thank you, David. Ah, oh, that's really nice. And uh, Cobra Bebop, camera band is probably a good thing. Um, it's It's one thing. Uh, I live in Arizona and have to consistently, this is from Trucker Matthew, I live in Arizona and have to consistently go clean up the uh, Sugurado National Park's pulp trash of cal cal cacti and pick up beer bottles. The desert is now full of life uh, to those who don't know. Yeah, this is, this is another problem. When you have um, trash cans, people will, I don't know why, but look, Japan just has a culture where people will, if what they bring in, they take out. So that's one of the reasons why I love this country so much. There's, there's people just respectful of, of their own personal belongings and the nature and situation around them. And if they litter, they're also afraid that someone might have seen them and they don't want to get in trouble. So that's another reason why people don't litter. But, uh, you know, Japan just has a culture of taking your own garbage with them. And I like that. And I do that now too, for better or for worse, probably for better. I should make sure I do do that. America is filled with random trash cans. Yes, it, but it's convenient, right? And it gives jobs to people.
but if people abuse the rights and they don't throw the trash away or they don't recycle, then people lose those trash cans in Japan, the ones that we do have. So it's just different cultures. Um, see here, Chris Hansen right <laughs> Chris is always an interesting guy. I would be sticking wrappers in cracks or burn it up with a lighter. Chris, please talk with your mother about <laughs> your behavior. <laughs> Leo Doyle. So they take away people's phone cameras. Leo, good. I'm glad that you asked that and brought that up. There's no news on how they will enforce it. They will give a ban. The kid was very, very interested in, in me as a... He just kept staring at me. He's so cute. There is a, the, the, Kyoto has not told us how they are going to enforce this law. Um, but I have a feeling that they will enforce this law because they're Kyoto. It's one thing in Tokyo. If, you know, they might let you go and say, oh, you didn't know. In Kyoto, they don't care. They don't need more tourists. If you Instagram that you got fan, fined, they're happy with that. And news will get around. That's Kyoto. They're very, very, they got their own tough way. I was in Kyoto weeks ago and it was irritating seeing photographers with their DSLRs using flash throughout the night and didn't even, didn't, didn't even light up anything other than the blinding people. Yeah, this is, a, this is from uh, QWERTY Access. This is very true. Um, the flash photography, konnichiwa. Flash photography at night is very annoying to people. If you have your blinds up, Kyoto. It thinks a lot of construction. I'm gonna walk this way. All right, Kyoto has, has rules so strict that, you know McDonald's? And Kevin said this in the video, I think I cut him off. McDonald's can't use the color red in their signs. Starbucks has to subdue the color and advertising in Kyoto. Chains cannot come in um, without permission. It took Starbucks a long time before they could open up a shop on Ninenzaka, which is this very traditional street in, in Kyoto. So you're gonna see convenience stores do not have the same colors in Kyoto. They've had to adhere to Kyoto's rules. So don't think that you're special in Kyoto. Be, be one of us and just know that there's rules and you have to get knocked around a little bit. I was in Kyoto a few weeks ago from Jason Lewis, same trip. I met John and I was surprised at how many tourists there were, insane. Yes. There's a lot of, Kanazawa was the same thing. Kanazawa had like 80, 90% of the tourists in Kanazawa were Chinese. And that's not, that, I'm, I'm not gonna pick on any nationality or anything, but it was really, really loud in the quiet side streets of Kanazawa. And I know they don't want the tourist money anymore. They're okay with just leaving it and enforcing their rules. Kanazawa is a mini Kyoto. Kanazawa is a beautiful, beautiful city. Kanazawa has rules now as a reaction to bad, bad behavior by tourists. Don't climb a wall and try to take a picture of a, of a, of a, of a geisha getting ready because of Instagram. Don't break the law because of Instagram. I've seen people killed taking pictures on train tracks on YouTube for, in, for selfies for Instagram. This is too much. So there has to be a point where enough is enough. Insta tram. All right, I'm gonna take one or two more questions here. Um, John, what's the upcoming festival in Japan? Um, what is coming up? Next month, I'll be going to the Nabe Festival in Hibiya Park again. I love the Nabe Festival. Uh, what is coming up? Halloween is, I believe they're, they're still doing it in Shibuya. Um, Christmas. Disney, if you ask, ask our friend Spencer. <laughs> Any donuts left? No. No. Um, are you a Cowboys fan? I used to like Ezekiel Elliott. What does that have to do with Japan? I'm a, I'm a Buckeye, okay? I used to like Ezekiel Elliott, but he's, he's not the sharpest blade in <laughs> the drawer. And I'm learning that he might be a real not nice guy so but he's really good at football and yeah i won't not but root for a buckeye unless they break the law can you abduct me so i can live in japan that's crime even if it's a 
your family would come after me. John, how was your day so far? It's going okay. Just need to get some soup or something hot. Uh, when, when they start decorating Christmas in Tokyo, usually it's the day after Christmas, like the day, no, sorry, the day after Halloween. It's already started this year at like around October 15th. The Christmas lights are out already. Just doing the Christmas tree near Tokyo Station already. Already. Leopold, I don't know where he is. You're going to have to contact him. He's got his own, his own channel. He has his own social media. You can contact him directly. I'm not his agent. Talking about Peter. Yes, Ohio State is, is we're very proud of our Buckeyes. Um, anything else on Kyoto? On Kyoto, anybody? Today is Diwali in India. Happy Diwali. Um, we don't celebrate Diwali in Tokyo per se, but the Indian community will do it. They're in Kasai. I believe there's some events in Edogawa, a ward of Tokyo, where there's a lot of uh, Indian community there. Um, but nothing special planned that I know of. Now, I wish I was in India for Diwali. It's such a festive time. It's a lot of fun. Someone climbed a wall, Cobra Bebop. I, I heard reports that there were tourists going into private property and they were, they were being places that they weren't and some people were climbing a wall to try to get Instagram pictures. Um, I love Kyoto, but they're a little strict on tourists. This is from Era Ohara. Yeah. I think though that there's too many tourists. I think that you have to be overly strict and then you can loosen that strictness up. But no one will pay attention to the rules if you just make it for the case, sense of making a rule. You have to be able to enforce it. And it's going to be interesting to see how they enforce it. And I believe that they're going to have to. Um, that's the story. I thought the geisha had bodyguards. They, why should they have to have bodyguards? I, I don't understand why geisha need to have bodyguards and why people can't just respect them. And if you want to take a picture of a geisha, dress up as one and pay to do that. And you can walk the streets and you can have people take pictures of you and see how you like it. I can guarantee you that if you get, um, if you have white makeup and a, a kimono, you start walking around, a thousand tourists are going to come and ask your picture and you're not going to like, like that. I wouldn't like that. Um, but if you see me coming and you take my picture, I'll like that because I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of, I'm getting used to it. I'm okay with it. Kyoto, um, they will notify at the airport. I agree with taking pictures. As Kyoto does not have an airport. Um, that's in Kansai in Kyoto, in Osaka. So, the I believe at Kyoto Station and ports of call, you will start to see more signs and responsibility, like calls for responsibility. But I'm going to tell you right now, because I'm going to tell you right now read that rule book before you go to Kyoto just out of just because it's fun but do it because as I said you can break the rules when you know what the rules are and you understand them I think you can kind of skirmish it a little bit but you have to understand what they are to begin with um, I, I, I honestly believe that Tokyo 2020 will have some trouble because there's too many unpredictable things that happen and Jap Jap the culture here is different than anywhere else in the world but what happens after the Olympics as a result of this, it will be very interesting. I do know, and that's a shrine behind me, I do know that after the 2002 World Cup, we had some issues with hooligans, they called them, mostly from the UK, and uh, rules were enforced where known hooligans were sent back and deported on the, on the spot. And they had like, I don't know, it was pretty, pretty crazy. That's probably not the best thing to do, but they did it, they did that. So. Japan is reactive, and this is a reaction to something that happened, and we all lose. Will Japan get rid of the photo ban? The answer is, I don't know, but there's a possibility that they will. There's a possibility that in the future, the ban will go away if they see that people are respecting the rules again, but I, I don't see that happening. The way that the culture is right now, everyone wants to take a picture of everything. Everybody, look, I want to take a picture of this build. Check this out. Look at this beautiful building here. Do you see that? Now, if a thousand people were here to take a picture of that building and it was really loud, we'll probably lose the right to, to be in this neighborhood. Probably have security guards and stuff around. I 
I love that. I really love, love, love this neighborhood. <clears throat> All right, last question. No, no photos means no cameras. That means no smartphones. Don't take pictures of Geisha. Don't get take pictures of Michael. Don't take pictures in the neighborhood if there's a sign saying don't take pictures. I remember being in the Sistine Chapel and uh, there was a, a sign that said no pictures. And actually it was Japanese that were taking pictures. All right. This is back in 1996. And I remember um, everyone was just snapping away with flash in the Sistine Chapel and I was upset. I said, why were you taking pictures? They're telling you not to take pictures, but you feel like you have to take the pictures anyways. So this is a worldwide thing and I don't think it's gonna stop and I believe that they have to do something like this and it might be strict, it might be uh, going overboard, but what, are the, what, are, what else can they do before the Tokyo Olympics, before tourism even skyrockets more? It has to be very well driven into people's heads. Do not go crazy with your selfie photos with Maiko and Geisha and people and normal citizens that are traditional and different than you. Everybody, everybody wants to have a picture of the, the Geisha, the Maiko because they're different. They're unique. I understand that. It's traditional Japanese culture. But if we, if we abuse it, that culture might disappear because it's just a pain in the neck, right? I feel bad for the people of Tokyo when 2020 Olympics comes. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't, Tokyo is a very elastic city. This is a place where everybody comes from somewhere else, pretty much. There's Edoko, which are the um, people born here for several generations. And then there, uh, like everybody comes to university in Tokyo, many people stay. A lot of the, my Japanese friends, they come from Aomori, they come from um, Fukushima, they're coming from Totori Prefecture, from Kyushu. They just decided to stay here because the work is better. So this city is more elastic. People in Kyoto are from Kyoto. They're born in Kyoto. They have like centuries of tradition in this city and their rules were there before, before the tourist boom and the tourist bust and whatever happens, they're gonna preserve their city and they're gonna be extremely strict about it. My voice is cracking because I have a cold and I might be exaggerating it a little bit, a little bit. Um, MRI, MIR, MIR. Hi, John. My guess camera ban will be like cycling on the footpath. Yeah, not technically allowed, but you'll be okay if you're very respectful. That, I think that that's probably going to be the answer. You have to have extremely strict rules, and then people will tend to respect that. And I think over time, the rules will lessen and weaken. Vaughn, thank you. That's a great. I'm going to use David Kimura's um, money to go get some soup at the cafe over there after this. <clears throat> but if people are respectful, you could probably get away with stuff, all right? And if they say no and you say, oh, I'm very sorry, it's okay. But on Japanese TV news, this is, all right, I want to give you, before, before I leave, I want to give you the thousand people watching right now, just uh, one piece of information on how the Japanese see how foreigners react to rules, okay? Drones. There was a couple on Mount Fuji that was flying a drone on the peak of Mount Fuji. Everyone's watching the beautiful sunrise. You could take pictures of it. And then out of nowhere comes a drone right in the front of everyone's cameras and pictures. Like this. No permission to do this on the top of Mount Fuji. It's crazy. The air is very thin there. That's kind of dangerous to begin with. So, a guy, a, for, a ranger, asked them not to fly their drone before. And they said, okay. They flew the drone again. And he said, and the ranger caught them and said, don't fly your drone anymore. And he got very, very strict about it and got angry. And they said, okay. You know what they did? They flew their drone again when they were going down. And the ranger came up to them and like he completely lost it, but there was no way for him to enforce them. He couldn't take their passport or arrest them. All he can do is say, don't do it. And this made Japanese national TV. And this made a lot of people upset. These people vote and make laws. And when you see that, you can tell foreign tourists, even though it was just them and they're wrong and they're not a good representative of us, the good people, it's still 
representative of us. And this is why it's very important when you see a tourist doing something wrong, people might say, mind your own business, but it's my business if they change the laws and the way Japan sees us. Because I may be a foreign resident here for a very long time, the way people act here is also representative of me as an outsider. And I, I know Kevin and Peter and all my friends, Jennifer, if we see somebody doing something wrong, we'll probably let you know. And it is our business because we live here. And we don't want to see that anything get ruined and the laws changing. And this is very important. And I, it's just people have their own laws and rights in their own country. That's not Japan. We have our we have a special law, set of laws. <laughs> Kyoto has a special set of laws, which is right here. And you can see this uh, link in the description called the Akimahen, and it tells you how to act in Kyoto. It is a book published by the Tokyo, Tur the Kyoto Tourism Organization, and, and it's really good to know. And it's just, the picture on the top says it. The locals are not happy with the way that people just don't respect their laws and the rules and behave and would you I don't know just tourists are cool but not when they're you know just disrupting everyday life what do you think leave me a comment in the description below follow common sense if if, if it seems like you it's not respectful don't do it if, if your Instagram if you only have I don't know like it's good to be popular on Instagram because I use Instagram only in Japan TV. Follow me. Uh, if, you, like, if you want to be in it, like a, you need to get really cool photos, but you cannot be rude to get those photos and you have to do them, I believe, in an ethical way. And we're all guided by these rules. We were in the past and that doesn't mean that it changes for you. What Logan Paul or Paul Logan, I always get it mixed up because his first name sounds like a last name and last name sounds like a first name. I know he's apologized and I'm not going to be really hard on, on the guy anymore because it's ancient history. Um, but what happened is still going on today and what he did still has left such a negative feeling of foreign tourists and YouTubers. So he did a lot to really damage YouTuber creators that were living here, including me and other creators because of the way because of the way he was um, acted here in Japan. He had a very, very, I don't know, Japanese didn't like him for obvious reasons if you saw the videos. So you can completely understand, you can completely understand why that happened. Um, you can understand why we're not happy with him and why the reaction from Jap Japanese YouTubers living in Japan was very, very harsh. See that, Mr. Paul? Logan, they're coming to get you. I hope everyone's okay. Um, there you go. Yeah, Logan Paul was a was a deep. <laughs> can, I, can I say that? He was not. He did not respect Japan, and he did it to, to get views. And that culture. That I'm. I'm in a way. I'm. I'm glad that he did that. In a way, one very small way, because it gave us. It exposed this culture that we have to do anything we can to get a view. And if you've been watching this series for a long time, you know that I don't do that. I'll try, I do it for a good story, all right? And I know like if I show a 500 kilogram firework and being put into a cannon, it's gonna go viral. But I got permission to film that and I didn't have to jump over somebody's rights in order to do that. Oh, that's where we are on the map, guys. This is Skuda. And if you go straight, you go to Tokyo Station. Highly, highly recommend walking around, not here, but in, in here, where this red bridge is called Skuda Kobashi. Beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. Um, last question, because I gotta walk, walk back to the station this way and <laughs> just keep going. Last question here. Um, carry your passport always you should have a copy of your passport if you're getting a visa for another country or carry your passport always in, in Japan if you get checked by the police I got asked about my passport when I was walking konnichiwa konnichiwa youtuber uh, youtuber nande <laughs> <laughs> nande <laughs> 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 
Hot Tony be cutie They're happy because I'm a YouTuber. Alright. Funny, what a nice neighborhood. Again, like, there's no tourists here, so people live here. You have to be respectful. I, I forgot what I was talking about. Logan Paul writes in here, I won't do it again, sorry. Thanks for the Australian dollars, mate. <laughs> it's hard to expose. But I, I, I know, they, it's okay, Logan. I, as I said, I'm not, I'm not angry anymore. I'm not angry anymore. <laughs> oh, about the passport. Yeah, I was walking past the Chinese embassy and I didn't even know it. And a police officer stopped me and asked me for identification. And I had to, I sh actually had my passport because I was looking for the entrance to the Chinese embassy. So I showed it to him and told him I was looking for the embassy for the Chinese embassy. And he told me where it was. And, but I was asked for my passport. I was riding a bicycle and a police stopped me and they were checking for stolen bicycles. And they asked me for my ID. And we have a, at the time, um, we called them a, a Gaikokushin Todokushesho, which is a, a foreign residence registration card. I had to show him that and my address. And he was okay. He let me go. He checked that, checked it out. But you need to have your ID with you because there are security checks. There are foreigners who overstay their visas and just stuff like that. Um, it's good to have your ID with you in Japan. Yeah. Chris Hansen retracting a message. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Three of it. Logan, 10 bucks is not enough. <laughs> I'm reading the live stream. Uh, I, I do appreciate whoever that was. Thanks, thanks for making our day a little bit brighter. It is a very nice bridge here. Again, one of my favorite neighborhoods to just take a walk around. Uh, I'll do a live stream on this with the history of this area again in the, in the very, very near future. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, and the alley, alleyways here are really, really scenic and pretty. These are called Nagaya. They're, they're a throwback to Japanese. No, I wouldn't say a throwback, but they're like post World War II wooden houses, and they're they're not the best insulated houses. I actually almost moved into one. I actually almost moved into one if, several years ago, but the rent is a little bit high over in this area. So I think what we've learned here and our takeaway is be really respectful of the laws. Um, respectful of, of each neighborhood. And no, after 10 p.m., you shouldn't be making a lot of loud noises. Um, if you go out and drink, okay, we got it. But if you're with your friends, be pretty. Just, just remember, you're not the only one in the area. Be reactive to the people around you, right? We, we have this one expression, and this is, this is the thing that I live, live by. And anybody who's watching this, foreign residents in Tokyo, um, or, or anywhere in Japan will understand this very, very well. There's an expression called KY, kuki ga yomeru. And this essentially means that you, you read the air. You can look around you, you can see the people around you and get the feeling from the air around you that you're doing something wrong. This is not, this is not right, you need to change. And this is a very important thing. And I, I got this by living here for a long time, I now can I now can read the air and I know when I should do something and I know just by because I'm no longer thinking about myself I'm thinking about the people around me and in Japan we're we're not just thinking about the self we're not thinking about ourselves we're thinking about the people around us and that's why we don't have these problems like canceling without canceling a reservation like five minutes before we don't do that because we we are thinking about other people more than ourselves we don't um, take pictures of people without permission because we're thinking about them, not about ourselves, what we need. This is a very ingrained in Japanese culture. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. and something that we have to really respect. If you come to Japan as a tourist, maybe there's things that you want. I understand that. And you, you come here to give your tourist dollars, your, your, your tourist yen. I understand that. Japan appreciates that. But also we want to make sure that the people here are gonna stay very hostious, great, uh, gracious hosts and be really kind. And that requires on your part to be able to read the air around you and think about the other people to fit into society. You might only be here for a week, but what you do 
might stay here for a generation. Again, Logan Paul, thanks for the super chat. I'm not picking on you specifically. Respect. It's all about respect, right? All right. All right, guys. Have a good day. Have a good night. I hope this was informational for you. We got got an entire month. Hit that subscribe button if you th if you like these live streams. Make sure the notification bell is on always. And uh, once again, the Patreon supporters get notifications as well. And their notification systems are not perfect in in uh, on YouTube, so we find it other ways. Instagram as well will help help guide you here. And the like button always is appreciated. It's a small price to pay. I sometimes hold viewers ransom for likes to do things. It's my way. It's my rules. This is our live stream, though. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good night. Jay, um, David, thank you for the super chat. I'm going to go get some uh, soup over there. Behave yourselves in Kyoto. Love you, too. <laughs> Look at this super chat. Thank I love you too, guys. Bye-bye. Happy Diwali.